Hi everyone, for this month's Nano of the Month, we're going to be exploring a paper from Merck. Yeah, this is a really cool paper that just came out. And what they're looking at here is a really important protein for LDL cholesterol, and that's PCSK9. And PCSK9 is a serine protease, so it's got enzymatic function. But what we're going to talk about today is its protein-protein interaction with the LDL receptor. So that's the receptor that helps the body remove LDL cholesterol from the bloodstream. And what PCSK9 does is it binds, and we can see up here, it binds to the LDL receptor and basically causes it to be degraded. So there's less LDL receptor available to remove LDL cholesterol. So there are therapeutic antibodies, Steve, that are available therapeutically to go after PCSK9 to treat this, but small molecules have been really tough. And the reason is, if you, if you pull this interface down between these, Steve, and get up close to it, what you'll see is this protein-protein interaction, like a lot of protein-protein interactions, is a large, flat surface with a lot of hydrophobic interactions and no, no good spots at all for a small molecule to bind and interrupt it. And Merck tried hard. They ran over a dozen screens looking for small molecule inhibitors of this interaction and never found a good hit. One of the screens was over 2.5 million compounds. But what we're going to talk about today is a completely different approach. And, and people have heard about Protax. These are uh, proteolysis-targeted chimeras. So what they allow you to do is have a molecule that just binds to a protein, doesn't have to interrupt its function at all, binds to it, and yet recruits the proteasome. And the proteasome is a complex inside cells that basically chews up unwanted or damaged proteins. So what's interesting about this, Steve, is this is what we call an allosteric site. It's away from where the action is happening. Mohs Site Finder did predict this as a possible place where a small molecule could bind. And so Merck screened over 200,000 molecules using affinity selection mass spec. You looked to pull out a binder, and they found one binder out of all those compounds. Let's go into the binding pocket. Excellent, excellent. So Steve, if you go deep in there, you can draw some important hydrogen bonds. And over near you, there's the two methoxies, the oxygens of those two methoxies. Mm -hmm. Both apparently make hydrogen bonds to that arginine 357. Yeah, and those yeah. are right about three angstrom or a little bit less, so really nice. So, so you can see that it, this hit is really nice. It, it fits into this pocket that uh, really people didn't know existed until they did the site finder and did this screen. So what Merck then decided to do was try to improve this molecule. One, pick up ad additional interactions and possibly improve drug-like properties. So we can go on to another crystal structure and jump right to their optimized molecules. So Steve, I was thinking, we have this ligand binding this allosteric site, but remember, where this protein binds to the LDL receptor is somewhere else entirely. And so mm -hmm. phenylalanine 379 is one of the key residues on PCSK9 that binds to L the LDL receptor. So you can quickly highlight that. Yeah, so we can see it's way over here. Way over on the back side over here. So this is the face that binds with the LDL receptor. So this is the region of interest where uh, it binds to the LDL receptor. Uh -huh. uh, but then over on this side is our allosteric binding pocket that we're actually looking as a druggable target. Yeah, and, and so yeah. binding the molecule here doesn't appear to have any direct effect on the function of that other side. So. Uh -huh. It's not an inhibitor, it's just a binder. And so, uh, so this is the, uh, the same binding pocket, just with a uh, different chemical structure docked in there? Yeah, so in, in Merck used structure-based drug design. They used the X-ray structure of that previous molecule to figure out where they could pick up new interactions, where there was space. And they saw there was space off this methoxy, so they put this, they put a number of groups here. This is a tetrahydropyran, and now this picks up a nice hydrogen bond with the arginine as well as this ether oxygen here. But the other thing that's really cool is this is a whole new group that they put on out here. And they point out that the, this fluoro of the fluorophenyl mm -hmm. picks up an interaction with the backbone uh, amide nitrogen NH here of the arginine. But then this interaction of the carboxylic acid, this is brand new with the arginine out here. So, wow. so this is exciting, but something else Merck did uh, they did a protein-templated approach 
using click chemistry to try to uh, advance their hits as well. So this was structure based, but the other thing they did is they took their original molecule, uh, hung uh, an azide off it, and then had other fragments that had alkynes on them. And that, you know, without catalyst, that reaction, that click chemistry goes very slowly. But if both molecules are bound to the protein and that alkyne and the azide are close together, it then lowers the energy of activation and they react. And so they did that and they didn't find any compounds as potent or as good as the one we're looking at. But what they found is they could have groups that hung off into the solvent uh, where you are, Steve. So that taught them that they could have potent molecules that were also solvent exposed. So now we should have our nice protein structure uh, with our very large small molecule that sort of you know, kept going out this way. So <laughs> as, as you were mentioning earlier, yep. yeah, going out on a solvent. Uh, they really built a lot in this region. Yeah, and, and this is what, what people do with degraders. They need to have a piece that gets out of the protein so that the, the part that's going to activate the degradation can reach in and grab the molecule. So these are called heterobifunctional ligands. So this part of the molecule functions to bind tightly to PCSK9, but this triboc arginine out here is recognized by the 20S proteasome. And that 20S proteasome is what we mentioned. That's the protein complex that chews up unwanted or damaged proteins. And Merck built this molecule. And in fact, in whole cells, they were able to show that this quite potently uh, binds and degrades both PCSK9, but also the pro form of it, uh, the one that still needs to be further processed before it's released. Out, outside the cell. So a, a very effective protein degrader here, a great example of using structure-based drug design and also of ProTac technology. So over here, so we'll probably still have the same uh, hydrogen bond forming here then? Yeah, you're right, Steve. So this molecule manages to keep all the interactions that we were looking at on the last one to, to bind tightly to PCSK9. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of bonds, especially when we look at this uh, water network as well. Yeah. Um, um, so it seems like all three chemical structures, um, you really had this uh, same six-member ring with the nitrogen out there. Um, you had this same um, you know, benzene ring that was also attached. And then this thiazole amide hasn't changed either. Yeah. It seems like um, this base chemical never really went away. Yeah, everything we've looked at today has been off the ethers, off the two methoxies they've built out from there. Yeah, and then, so, so this one got built out into that one, essentially. Uh-huh. Um, and then they kept going from there, and then they built... Um, the degrader. You know, yeah, so it's a, it's a really nice approach. The first Protax have just gone into the clinic in the last year, I, I think for cancer indications, for prostate cancer, for instance, and I think for breast cancer. So really exciting advances. A number of companies are working on this Protax approach. Obviously, Merck is using it, too. If you go to the... Uh, Journal of Cell Chemical Biology. Um, you said that it's coming out uh, pretty soon. This is a pre-publication release. Yep, this is on the web. I think the actual uh, in print, in ink publication comes out next week. So, um, you know, thanks everyone for joining this month's Nanom of the Month.